Hi guys, so this is video 2 um, of another video 3 if you're looking through the play playlist. Um, so I'm going down with a whole um, scrap uh, out of a shoebox uh, thing. So I actually made um, two watercolor panels. So, um, or rather, it's a mixed media panel but on a watercolor <laughs> panel. Hmm, I wonder how to talk about that. So, uh, the nice background is done by like a swish, the smooshing technique. At random places, so this is like um, I use um, I think wild honey from uh, the stress ink and also some Brutus Monroe's inks. Um, there's a nice mint color that you see at the at the splash there, um, and probably like here as well. Kevin's not probably not gonna keep that up because I picked those up because they're quite subtle tones. <laughs> and yeah, so this is the mini. No, no, this is the panel mini panel. It's really small. This is like um, 5 inches by 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 inches. So it's like it's really small. It's slightly bigger. So um, this, um, the colors really went really well with like this whole summery theme. Um, which is why that uh, shirtless guy really <laughs> worked his way in quite well. Um, Create the things you wish existed. It's one of the uh, stamps from uh, one of the Tim Holtz Singh stamps. Um, and what I did with the paper was I'm not sure that you can see that, but um, yeah, you can see. So, what I did was I actually cut like little bu buildings out and I stacked one of them one on top of the other to create like this uh, illusion of like a like a like a cityscape here of sorts but because the colour was just very summery so it's as if like you built like a cityscape on the on the, on the side of like a beach uh, with a colour tone uh, and this is uh, and it looks really just really summery which is really nice and finally I did a um, what do you call this? Um, junk journal, yes. So, <laughs> how we through the collections, like, oh, I'm a little bit tired of. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at the same colors. So, um, uh, one of the things that I, I, I realized I, I, uh, that I could do uh, to use up all the materials was actually to do like a junk journal, and then I really enjoyed the whole process. Um, and and because, like, the way I put the kit together was also, it's a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say random, but the, the collections were coordinated, but they were ne not necessarily like thematically chosen. It was chosen more out of like colors or whatever that inspired a sort of like a, like a similar feeling. Um, like you feel like the same thing towards like a set of thing, and then I, I put those together. So I think it works really well when you put it in the, in the, in the context of like a junk journal. It's, uh, it's It gives you a really artsy look and it's really, really cool. Um, I just want to highlight like this is actually Distressed Crayons. Um, and I know there were some complaints initially by different reviewers that you know, like the, the that the stamps don't really stamp well on it. On it, um, for one, I think they really should use the the um, archival uh, stamp pads. Um, and the other thing I, I did realize is that in order to to be able to stamp like well on it, um, one of the things that you really really need to do is you need to make sure that um, the the distressed crayon is really really rubbed in until you can no longer rub it in any further and, and, and that creates like the flat background for a uh, flat surface sorry for your stamp to be stamped on so that's how I got this and this is the cover uh, this is I did some really cool thing um, which I thought was kind of fun I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick up like all the nuances of uh, of what I did here but I took like a craft paper and with one of the temples like the flower stamp that does the outline and what I did was that using different very soft tone uh, stamp colors from both Buddhist Monroe and Distress Ink, I stamped multiple times, um, overlapping the, the Im image, and it creates this really cool, um, like uh, like soft pattern paper of sorts, which I used at the back, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Okay, do a quick flip through because as you know, and I'm just going to highlight like the things that I thought was interesting. So here I did that whole uh, ombre effect with like the like with like the. Um, color pencils, which is also what I did for uh, this piece right here. So I took some uh, Karen Dachi uh, Neo Color color pencils and I just uh, put like uh, close colors together and then I, I did a, like, a wash of that after that. And you get this really cool grainy sort of like, um, it's very natural looking, uh, this almost looks like a sunset of sorts, um, which, I th which I thought was kind of kind of cool. Um, and what I did was I took like the Tim Holtz stamp with like um, the, the cityscapes and then I I stamped it over with very soft color, so it gives uh, this really nice illusion of a like a cityscape on the back, of like a like a you no know, like a sunset of sorts. 
which would look below the theme. Once again, uh, this has a place for putting stuff behind. And some of this is watercolor paper, but um, I like that it will thicken and it distributed through the paper so it kind of keeps the integrity of the book in place. gonna flip through relatively quickly because now the pages are like well the pages now one of the things that I, <laughs> I realized that when I was doing like um, uh, a book with different sizes especially um, and I think this kind of this sort of problem is um, it's relatively um, well known to crafters which are on like my side of the world in the Asia patch where uh, and even Europe uh, because we use A4 but we also um, no, because the crafting industry is also moving with like a five and a half and by eleven, also a twelve by twelve inches, they move by inches, right? So like the like the letter size and the A four size, I always have the problem of like uh, one a little bit longer, taller than the other, and then there was like the papers that was four by six. So um, I had this uh, I would say happy problem of like uh, having pages that were kind of the same size but not really, um, and and that's how I made the book uh, to in the binder ring. Um, so like some of them like when they punch through, they were a little bit shy at the top. So what I did was I actually use a tape to tape those up and then uh, punch them through and then what you get is like a really cool like almost like a tab sort of look which is really really fun it's letter pressed uh, page so this I did with some uh, of the hmm did you use the trash crayon? no I didn't but they are used for this <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea where the black comes from. Hmm. Oh, the black paint. I just washed the black paint down. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, like a like a stamp. And that looks like kind of like a. I did like this one, like a mountain ridge sort of thing, but it's uh more abstract than it is like exact. Looks like kind of like draw for the life of me. Uh, places for. Uh, it generally cut to go into. So when I, how I did this was I took like the uh, little ephemera pieces or like uh, die cut pieces and I stapled them onto the thing like on the corners with a typical tiny attacher and it creates this pocket which is kind of fun. <laughs> and then I have that like a pattern paper like dispersed uh, throughout which is just really cool. Um, and you have like little things like a little envelope or another like uh, um, journaling card. You see, like the staple parts showing through, which is kind of fun. Uh, these stickers are from K and Company, um, and I really love uh, these stickers. I wish they would release them again, but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, and another place for like um, I'm not quite sure whether I just stuck this whole thing down. I, I think I did, so I think it's not really in like a pocket, but it's like a fun page. And along the way, I had like this tabs in which I die cut out and then stapled them on as well. Like a pocket here. There's like a uh, nice like label. Even more pockets and well, tuck spots and stuff. Another tuck spot here. So like a mini envelope of sorts. This is the cabinet die, uh, with a kind of like a place for like a where a photo can go right behind here, or like in any ephemera, or whatever. It's like a junk journal, you do whatever you want. Um, this is like that um, nice, like almost glassine sort of um, material, I think. And I had like places where things could like slot in, so it could be like big things like a ticket or like a couple of photos if I want to. Uh, um, envelope thingy and that's and that's a junk journal uh, I really like this one because um, I think the color distribution is really good <laughs> Pet self I'm back <laughs> um, and I like how it's, it's already feels like it's a, like a collection of random things um, and it makes for a really cool book <laughs> So, uh, after making all of these projects, I realized that um, one of the things that I will tweak on my process for the next scrap out of the box is that I think I have a small kit, um, so it doesn't feel so painful. <laughs> um, trying to work through like the different um, 
because I, I guess it's possible to get bored of uh, of a project um, and yeah, and we don't really want that would we um, and yeah so that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> Yep, so uh, that's all for today. Um, the next one, next kit that I'll be showing up uh, will be another like scrap out of box of sorts. It'll also be kind of big of a kit, but it'll be a lot smaller. And so that I'll be focused on making like a couple of projects out of it. And because at the same time, I'm actually doing like a massive uh, uh, <laughs> de stash and decluttering of my room. Um, I'm quite proud of the progress so far, it's amazing. Um, um, I'm sort of using the um, Kumari method of like uh, re decluttering and just weeding out the stuff which I thought I need but I don't actually need them uh, nor, nor want them, nor desire for them so that they're like, just there because no, they're there so um, and at the same time also going I'll give like a review of the book and how it is helpful for crafters what are things you need to adapt and modify uh, what are some of my issues with the book um, I think no book is without any issues because they are they definitely come from somewhere. They are not like in the way so there's particular like value statements that they make and they in which you have to like kind of think for yourself whether or not um those are things that you necessarily agree with. Um but regardless I think um it was a useful method and I think it's very practical. Um and it really helped me clear out like um forty percent of my uh wardrobe and I think close to about 20-30% of my craft stuff, I have decluttered them now. Um, they are actually <laughs> they're actually cluttered outside in my living room and not in, in my room, so it's kind of sad. But um, I haven't quite figured out what to do with them yet, so um, yeah. But regardless, um, and looking at my room, the state of my room, I'm just really happy at, at how it looks. And uh, so if I after I really do like a whole finish, after like uh, even clearing off like my documents and other stuff, um, I will do a craft room tour, something that I haven't done in a while, um, and it's something that's really up and coming for all, like a different uh, craft uh, organization stuff uh, that seems to be um, like that got everybody like really um, uh, uh, up about this whole decluttering thing. So yeah, <laughs> catch you guys next time. Bye.